Hello, everyone. Uh, so my name is Yegor Naumov, and uh, I'm the product marketing manager for Team CD at JetBrains. And uh, today I'd like to share uh, some of our plans, some of the things that we're working on in the upcoming uh, releases, uh, and kind of some of our ideas and uh, thoughts about how we're going to move forward as a product, as a team over the next uh, couple of years. So there's a quick note before this presentation uh, is that this roadmap is not set in stone. So things can change, uh, circumstances can change. Uh, we can have uh, additional features coming in. We can have uh, some of the features dropping out of the roadmap depending on the, uh, some of our other priorities and uh, uh, different circumstances basically. So uh, just keep this in mind. And uh, But generally, most of the things that I'm going to talk about today are either already in development or are very soon going to be uh, added to our product uh, roadmap uh, in terms of development. So first things first, I'd like to start with just telling how uh, how our process works, how we release TeamCity. Uh, so in, in general, we have two major releases per year. Uh, and generally, this is uh, in, in the end of spring and in the end of uh, fall or beginning of winter. So our last release was... Uh, uh, in May, and our next release is uh, planned for uh, for the end of uh, November in a couple of weeks from now, really. And uh, in between major releases, we have a number of uh, minor releases uh, where we release bug fix updates, where we release security fixes, uh, and other smaller updates to the uh, to the version of Team City that is. Uh, that's the major one. And for example, our latest uh, minor release was on October 8th, and that was uh, 2021.5. And just in case you're lost with this uh, version uh, numbering, as 2020 is the, the year, obviously. Dot one is the major version, so we either have dot one or dot two. Uh, and then it's the bug fix uh, update number. Uh, on average, we have uh, from four to six uh, bug fix updates uh, before uh, for each of the major versions. There's also uh, an early access preview uh, program that we run before each major release. Uh, basically, what this is is uh, we uh, release a build of Team City that is uh, going to be uh, going to become a major release in a couple of months or in several weeks, uh, and we let you try it out for free uh, with uh, no limitations, but for a limited number of times. So you, you can set up as many build configurations and run as many uh, build agents as you want in those EAP builds, but only for a limited number of time until this EAP program runs, until we release the, the final version of it. So we generally have uh, up to three EAP uh, releases before a major release. And like currently for 2020.2, uh, which is coming soon, as I mentioned, in a couple of weeks, we're already uh, on EAP3, and it's available now. You can go to the website at jetbrains.com slash teamcity slash next version and uh, download it from there. So it's a great way to play around with, with some of the new features that are going to be uh, released soon. And also, we really appreciate if you could provide us feedback because EAP builds are not final, uh, and we as a team really uh, rely on uh, on that early feedback from some of the early uh, EAP users. And really appreciate that if you could do that, if you could provide us that feedback. Um, also, just to let you know like what our releases are uh, made of, uh, uh, what, the, what they consist of is, is the TeamCity core, which is the backend and the frontend part of TeamCity, and also a set of uh, bundled plugins. So currently we have uh, over 50 bundled plugins. and what is a bundled plugin? It's basically a plugin for Team City, uh, which is developed and maintained by JetBrains, so by our team. It is a part of our um, development uh, pipeline. And actually, uh, if you visit my talk later today, I will uh, kind of dive into that a bit deeper. Uh, but generally, these, these are fully uh, part of our development pipeline. They go through all the testing, they go through uh, all the maintenance, uh, and they are released as a bundle as a single uh, product uh, together with the Team City Core. Uh, and if you'd like to view uh, enhancements requests and the bugs uh, that are going to be fixed in the next releases, if you would like to kind of 
keep track of uh, uh, when or in which build uh, a certain feature going to make it into the uh, product, you can go to the same uh, U-Track instance that David has already shared with you uh, and just search through uh, it, look at the build release numbers and see what is going to make it into the uh, build pipeline. All right, so without further ado, I'd like to uh, move on to the product roadmap. So there are several areas uh, that we focus on at this moment. And uh, uh, this is not a timeline, it's just a set of, uh, of these areas that we're going to uh, talk about today. So one of them is Team City Cloud. As David has already mentioned, uh, Team City Cloud is a SaaS version of Team City that we're, we have released uh, earlier this year for, as a public beta release. Uh, and we have uh, high hopes about it, and we have we see a lot of interest from our users. Uh, so this is one of the first areas I'm going to talk about. Then the multi-server scalability is also a very important uh, uh, part and area of development for us. It kind of allows Team City to be highly scalable, uh, to be highly available on larger installations, and it provides additional instruments uh, on how to achieve that. Uh, then there is a number of core uh, CI and CD uh, improvements. Uh, and generally, historically, Team City has always been smart uh, uh, in dealing with, uh, in understanding the developer workflow and in providing some of the intelligent functionality uh, on top of it to help developers and the development teams to achieve that uh, uh, smooth and uh, frictionless CI uh, pipelines. And we're going to release more features there uh, in that uh, area. And I guess this. Every release of Team City will consist of a number of features from this area. So another area of uh, focus is the Kotlin DSL. Um, uh, configuration as code is a big part uh, of uh, what our users are looking into and using for con constructing their build configurations and keeping track of, of the settings. So uh, we are going to introduce new changes in that. And we also developed that uh, direction uh, for our product. Uh, we also going to add a number of build runners and integrations. Uh, we're working uh, hard on the new UI uh, code named Sakura, uh, and there's a number of cloud features that I'm going to talk about. Okay, so let's dive deeper into each of them. Um, first things first, Team City Cloud. Uh, it is currently in public beta, as I mentioned. Uh, the target release date, uh, the public release date, is the beginning of uh, 2021. You're very welcome to check it out, sign up, and while it's in, in beta, you can uh, use it for free for unlimited, for basically unlimited number of builds and uh, and users. Uh, so what is it? It's it's the same Team City that you know and love, but it's managed by us uh, by JetBrains, and it's hosted on AWS. Um, we either provide a full fully hosted version where you don't have to think about any build agents. Uh, or we let you bring your own build agent and connect it uh, for any custom workflows that you want to run or any custom uh, set of uh, software that you would like to utilize. Uh, well, we would like to make it easier for those customers, for those users who are who just don't want to like uh, too much deal with the maintenance of the build server and uh, just how, like to enjoy building the pipelines, the build chains, uh, and like starting and running your builds. Uh, the pricing will be based on the number of active contributors. So we don't limit the number of parallel builds or the concurrency uh, that you uh, can achieve. However, uh, the pricing is going to be limited by the number of active contributors. And a cool thing is that the active contributor is not just any developer on your team or any QA engineer or DevOps engineer. It's only uh, those developers who uh, who commit, who author at least 10 changes, uh, 10 commits over one month. So uh, that's kind of a very generous approach to, to this. There's going to be also a number of uh, build minutes uh, uh, tied to to the number of builds, uh, to the number of uh, active contrib contributors, and you will also have an option, of course, to uh, purchase those additionally. So to sign up for Team City Cloud, just uh, go to uh, jetbrains.com/teamcity/cloud and sign up for the beta. As I said, it's free uh, and it's unlimited for the time being until we are in the beta uh, stage. So another section is the multi-server scalability. And this has been a focus area for our development team over the last couple of releases. And it's going to continue to be that for the next couple of releases, at least. 
Uh, and the goal that we are trying to achieve is to have a fully scalable uh, TeamCity installation uh, with multiple nodes that are interchangeable uh, between each other. So we'd like to provide this multi-service setup. And what we started with is we are providing you an option to set up a secondary node of TeamCity and to offload a number of responsibilities to that node. That helps you with the scalability uh, and with performance for some larger installations. And like currently, that what we have already released is the process and build triggers, process and data produced by run and builds, and uh, polling of uh, version control repositories. Uh, these are the, uh, the responsibilities that you can already offload to the secondary server. Uh, so what are we going to add? Um, first of all, the full featured UI. Uh, this is a feature of 2020.2, so it's uh, going to be ready very soon. And actually, Alexander will mention that uh, in his uh, talk right after this one. Uh, basically, it's, uh, we're going to move towards the full parity uh, between the main TeamCity node and the secondary TeamCity node. We'll let, you, we'll let your users uh, uh, configure, build configurations, projects, et cetera, also on the secondary node through the UI, not only on the primary node. Uh, another feature is the build queue processing. This is a pretty important functionality uh, uh, that will let TeamCity uh, secondary server also process builds from the queue. So already right now, you can uh, add builds to the queue. So users on the secondary node can trigger builds and they'll be added to the build queue. For But after that, uh, currently, the secondary node cannot process them. So agents will not start the new builds from this queue. And this feature will let you actually start the builds from the queue. Uh, it's currently in design stage, and uh, we're looking for it to be available next uh, year, either in the first or the second major release of the year. Uh, and the third big one is the failover mode. So basically, it's uh, an automatic switch between the primary, the main node, and the secondary node whenever uh, the primary node is down for some reason, either for maintenance or it's just down for some uh, networking issue or some other issue. So this uh, this is almost uh, a step towards uh, full high availability. So uh, I'm really looking forward to this one. I think it will be many of our customers will actually appreciate this. Now onto the core CI improvements. So this feature has already been released. I just like it so much. I want to mention it again. Uh, so conditional build steps, uh, we released them uh, in May. Uh, in the 2020.1 release. And this was the most highly voted feature in our issue tracker for uh, many years. Uh, and basically what it uh, lets you do is uh, it lets you add a condition to any build step for any build runner within TeamCity. Uh, and based on a certain parameter value, you can decide whether or not you'd like to run this build step. So it supports build parameters for both uh, server and agent uh, parameters. Really cool. Uh, next one is the trigger defined parameters. So this uh, feature will actually let you uh, define additional logic uh, for when to trigger builds uh, based on different parameters. For example, uh, if you want to uh, if you want to trigger nightly builds only only when uh, it was uh, the previous builds were triggered by a schedule and not by any other uh, action or event, uh, you will be able to do that. So based on the triggers or what trigger, you can change the parameters and then decide the logic of what's going to happen. It's currently in development. It's going to be available in 2021, uh, either in the first or the second major release. Now the, to the testing. Uh, TeamCity has always been smart with how it processes tests. It gives you a lot of data about tests. It gives you test history, provides you multiple tools to uh, go through uh, when each test uh, has failed for the first time, what are the new failed tests, etc. So, and we are adding more functionality to to, to this uh, testing uh, stage as well. First one is the custom interpretation of flaky tests. This is actually going to be released uh, in 2020.2, and basically what it does, it will let you uh, define additional logic over how you want to uh, deal with the flaky test, which fail or succeed uh, based on some random uh, condition, for example, time-based uh, failures. So you will be able to uh, add a uh, option in TeamCity to kind of, if the test failed, but then it uh, succeeded in later build, 
don't fail the build itself. Uh, and the second one is the intelligent test splitting, uh, and that's uh, it's, that's a cool one. So uh, we know that customers sometimes ask us, like, how do you parallelize your builds? Uh, how do you parallelize your build steps? And we don't have the ability to parallelize build steps because we actually usually recommend just split it into different build configurations, uh, build a build chain, and run it in parallel. But here, for some of the builds that run hundreds or thousands of tests uh, just within one build configuration, we'll actually provide intelligent test splitting. We'll split them into groups and utilize different agents that are not running in the builds at the moment to process those tests faster. Uh, yeah, another feature here is the agentless build steps. Uh, again, this is, you're gonna hear more about it from Alexander uh, about in the, his talk about what's coming in uh, in the next version. Uh, here for, so for some of the build configurations, we know that agents, build agents in Team City actually send their jobs elsewhere and just sit there waiting until that external uh, machine or external process is uh, being finished. For example, for deployment jobs, you might be waiting for some manual approval step. And currently, uh, Team City build agents will just sit there and it will be occupied for this whole time until you're waiting for that manual approval build step in deployments. And what we want to provide is we want to provide the ability to kind of detach those uh, builds from the build agent, free it up, and let it build, uh, let it run some other builds while that external job is still happening. So uh, this is the feature. And again, Alex is going to tell you more about that. So on to Kotlin DSL. Uh, first of all, the the the, the one of the features in development is uh, we'll provide uh, you an ability to view project configurations uh, as DSL from within the UI. So there is this uh, little button, as you might have noticed on the configure on the settings pages on the administration pages, uh, view DSL. So what it does, it basically shows you the current settings that you're uh, watching, uh, uh, looking at as a DSL uh, based on Kotlin. So uh, currently it's only available for uh, build configuration uh, settings and we'll make it available for project configuration settings as well. It's coming in uh, 2020.1 and as well as the per branch configurations. So currently uh, when you have different branches, uh, TeamCityS still uh, lets you only use a single uh, build, uh, single uh, configuration as code uh, settings file for all of them. And we have a lot of requests on, let us please uh, change those settings within different branches. And this is what we are going to provide in 2021.1. Uh, 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 and last but not least for Kotlin DSL is uh, we will add the ability to disable UI editing uh, while uh, there are settings uh, in Kotlin DSL code uh, for, for a project. So currently, as you know, uh, you can enable uh, Kotlin DSL based settings for your projects and uh, continue still continue editing uh, settings in the UI. Uh, and we think it's a really cool feature. It gives a lot of flexibility in uh, for different users of Team City to differently set up their uh, build configurations and projects. And we understand that some like uh, to do it in code, some like to do it in the UI. But when you do it in, in both, when you do it, when you do this hybrid approach, there is a lot of uh, manual. Uh, patching that you need to do on the uh, Kotlin config side. You need to copy those patches of all the new change settings and apply them manually. It sometimes is not too convenient, so we're going to allow customers to uh, optionally disable the UI editing when the uh, version settings are enabled for your project. And uh, a smaller one uh, that is currently designed, we want to kind of simplify the configuration scripts and uh, amid you amid the imports uh, that you need to add to all your settings.kts files. And uh, yeah, this is currently in design. We're not sure we'll be able to achieve it easily, but uh, uh, we're looking at next year to uh, have it ready for one of the releases. Uh, some additional improvements. We are adding new build runners. Uh, so .NET 5 build runner is going to basically replace uh, all five different .NET runners that we currently have. However, we're not going to... Uh, we're still going to keep those. Uh, it's not like we're going to replace them and only have this one. No, we're just going to uh, make it easier for our .NET 5 users to uh, con construct their build configurations. Uh, but we're going to uh, still have this uh, available, all the others runners available. This is scheduled for already the re next release in, uh, in November. 
And also we're adding a Python build runner. Uh, really cool. Uh, supports a lot of Python uh, uh, testing frameworks and just lets you uh, work with your Python projects out of the box. And additional e ecosystem integrations are the Bitbucket Cloud. We are uh, adding a pull request support for Bitbucket Cloud. And we are also designing multiple uh, integrations with JetBrains Space, which is a uh, integrated uh, team environment from JetBrains, which is also going to be released by the end of this year. Uh, and there's a number of uh, kind of cloud-related features, uh, not the Team City Cloud, but the uh, using Team City with cloud agents with uh, external clouds. Uh, so one is the persisting caches on cloud agents. Uh, this uh, drastically improves the speed of uh, how fast your agents spin up and start uh, running builds. Uh, as I say here, we actually uh, kind of we actually need it ourselves for Team City Cloud. So, but we're going to provide it uh, for all the users of Team City as an as an out of the box feature of uh, Team City on prem. And this is currently in design will be available next year. And then there is a couple of things that we are currently exploring. First of all, uh, we hear some requests about cloud friendly licensing. Uh, and we understand there are some uh, inconveniences with current licensing approach uh, to when you use multiple uh, build, uh, build agents in the cloud. So we're examining different ways to provide a more flexible approach for when you run your uh, cloud profile builds. Uh, and then we're also looking at providing uh, something like volume-based discounts for agent uh, for agent purchases, for especially for larger ones, uh, we see that uh, it might simplify the management and the procurement uh, of those licenses. And we are exploring the providing a premium support option for some of the, our large clients who probably need some uh, additional attention, uh, some additional uh, uh, maybe stricter SLAs, uh, urgency uh, notifications, and kind of more direct uh, access to our support team. So we're looking into all of this. And actually, if you're interested in this, please let us know either in the issue tracker or in support. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you about what you would benefit from and hopefully provide something useful to you. Yeah, and Sakura UI, um, as I mentioned previously, this is a large undertaking by our front end team. Uh, it started a couple of releases ago. As you might have noticed, we started uh, adding an option to switch to this uh, new experimental UI within Team City, uh, and this is a big step for us because this is going to be a. Uh, so we are reworking both uh, technically and also visually, as you might have noticed, uh, and it's going to be uh, done in, on new technologies. Uh, it's it renders the page on as a single page application. Uh, it should uh, perform better on larger installations and under larger load. Uh, and there's a number of features that we're, we've already implemented. We've already re, uh, redid a lot of pages uh, within the Team City, and there's a num number of them on the roadmap as well, such as the build queue page, for example, the header. As you can see here, it's, uh, uh, it's the dark mode header. So uh, yeah, this will also be available, uh, and some additional uh, administration pages, and so on. And actually, during this day, during uh, some of the talks, you might see uh, different combinations of the new UI and the old UI and the screenshots. So just uh, don't be scared, it's uh, it's fine. Uh, it's just uh, some people use different uh, UIs and hopefully if you haven't seen this yet, you can uh, take a look at it and find it useful. Uh, just if you're not using it, if you've never seen it yourself, uh, you can uh, enable it within your uh, Profile or ask your Team City administrator to do that, and uh, then each of the users will can make this choice themselves whether or not to switch to the, the new UI or to stay with the classic UI. Um, and yeah, I think this is all mostly it. Uh, I just wanted to say that everything that I talked uh, uh, about right now is uh, available on our website. We have released this public roadmap page. Just go to jetbrains.com slash teamcity slash roadmap, and uh, you can uh, see this whole list, basically what I just uh, presented to you uh, on the page. We try to keep it updated. We try, we try to uh, add the things that we're working on uh, to that page. We try to update uh, the statuses of different features and uh, kind of have this overview for you and other customers to uh, take a look at and kind of 
know and understand what is going to happen to the product over the course of the next several releases. And I will uh, say it again, uh, repeat after David, please share your feedback. Uh, a lot of these features that you've heard about today are made it into the roadmap because of the user feedback that we collected. We are happy to receive it on the, our issue tracker. Just go to the utrack.jitbrains.com slash issue slash TW, or just go to the utrack and select Team City project there. And uh, you can file a feature request, you can file a bug report, you can file an idea, a question. Uh, we'll be happy to process that. And uh, we cannot recommend, I mean, we cannot uh, guarantee that anything you ask for will make it into the roadmap. Of course, it doesn't work this way. But uh, I can assure you that every time we plan our next release or a number of next releases, we uh, take user feedback into account. And that's usually a very big factor. That's it for me. Uh, thanks a lot for your attention. I can, I guess, take a couple of questions if there are any. David? Yeah, thanks, Igor. This is uh, really helpful. So we do have a couple of questions from the chat. Uh, we will be reiterating some that we've already answered in the messages for the video stream uh, for those who are catching the recording of this. Um, let's start off with uh, the secure UI, Igor. Uh, can you talk a little bit about when we're expecting full feature parity between the new UI uh, and the old classic UI, where, where are we on that timeline right now? Yeah, as I said, we started working on it about a year ago, maybe a bit more. And I think we're looking at least for the one more year to catch up. Uh, but when I say catch up, it's not like we're just copying whatever we had and uh, reintroducing it in the new UI. We are also coming up with new approaches, with new diff additional views, additional pages that can be helpful. So for example, is a good example of that, it's, it's how we approach build chains. Uh, it's This part of the UI is not yet fully finished, but if you go to the dependencies tab in your builds, you can already see how we introduced a couple of new views for those build chains. So uh, yeah, I could, we don't have a hard date on when we're gonna switch, but anyway, it's not going to probably happen during the next year. And even when it happens, uh, we are still going to keep the option because we know that uh, some users still prefer to stay with the classic UI. And we will just have an option uh, to switch back to the classic UI for quite a long time. I don't have the exact date at this moment, but this will be uh, available uh, for most of our users for a long time. Right, and that was the next question that popped in. Will you be able to switch back to the old UI? Yeah, and the answer is yes. We're gonna keep the classic UI uh, inside TeamCity for, for a considerable amount of time. You know, one of, there are some limitations in the classic UI, which is why we've chosen to move forward with this new UI with some modern technologies that are gonna be able to load faster and also allow us to implement some new features. Um, so as we move forward with the new UI, uh, you may notice some new features being introduced into the new UI that you won't get in the classic UI, but yeah, just to reiterate, we, we do plan on keeping that uh, classic UI in TeamCity uh, long into the future. Um, another question here, uh, and I answered this in the chat, what will the pricing be for TeamCity Cloud? Um, and I guess before you answer, you know, we uh, won't be focusing a whole lot on TeamCity Cloud outside of our roadmaps here today. We don't want to make this a sales pitch. There's going to be organizations that are going to be ready to move uh, and want to move to a hosted environment for Team City. And there's going to be organizations that are really happy with their existing on-premise installation. Um, we do have preliminary pricing available for Team City Cloud uh, on our website. Uh, Jaeger, could you talk a little bit um, about the key metrics that uh, users will want to take into account that will uh, help contribute to uh, the pricing for Team City Cloud. Uh, sure. So yeah, as David mentioned, there is a preliminary pricing available at jetbrains.com slash teamcity slash cloud. Uh, so the starter plan will start with uh, a default three active contributors. Uh, there is a fixed price of $60 uh, per month for that. And what it includes, it actually includes uh, a number of build credits, storage, and uh, data transfer. So. All those parameters are fixed for the number and tied to the number of active contributors that you have. So for example, as I said, three active contributors on the starter plan uh, give you 21 build credits, 21,000 build credits, uh, 30 gigabyte of storage and 150 gigabyte of data transfer per month. 
And what it means uh, and why do we have those credits? You might be familiar with those maybe from some other CIs out there, but uh, generally it's, it's our approach to how we limit the number of uh, build time because we provide different uh, build machines. You can build like on Linux and Windows and Mac, not right now, but in the future. Uh, and you can also choose between those, like how many uh, RAM, how much RAM you might, your machine want, might have or how many CPUs. And depending on that, the price of each build minute will be different. So just for reference, 10 build credits per minute on the cheapest uh, Linux machine, machine right now and about 40 build credits for the Windows machine at the moment. Uh, in addition to that, you will be able uh, to purchase all those additional resources as you wish. And I think a very, very important um, point to mention here is that first, you can bring your own build agents and just connect them uh, to Team City Cloud for a, fix, for a fixed price per month. And this is not yet even uh, uh, depicted on our, on our website, but uh, we want to provide you an option to prepay uh, uh, our cloud machines before. And so basically we are looking for to give you more flexibility in terms of how you can utilize Team City Cloud, how you can actually save money on that, especially if you know that you're going to run regular jobs, for example, on Linux or Windows on a specific machine. So you can, you can plan your budgets. Great. Uh, so another question from the chat. Are there any plans to update the VMware uh, plugin for cloud profiles? I assume that's what you mean in the, the chat. Um, so there are a lot of enhancement requests on our Utrack instance around VMware. I think what we would need to do is understand um, your use case a little bit more uh, and where we're you know, not meeting expectations with your VMware plugin. So if you want to get in touch with us directly, um, we're happy to take a look at it. Just shoot a note to uh, support. Mention you saw something on uh, the YouTube channel today. Um, we're happy to get you some more information. And just to add to that, we actually use the VMware integration ourselves internally. I've actually mentioned that in my later talk today. So we we almost we basically use it every day, and uh, we appreciate any feedback on it. As David said, uh, just chime in on one of those uh, U-Track issues. Um, all right, working through some of the questions. Um, here's one. With the conditional build steps, what's the recommendation on how to decide uh, between choosing conditional build steps in your build configurations versus creating a whole separate configuration uh, for, a, for a different chain? Um, and I believe this was answered pretty well in the chat by one of our developers. Uh, one of the notes, when you are configuring a conditional build step, there's going to be less visibility on when a certain condition is running inside the build log, then you get in an individual configuration. So I don't have a whole lot to add on top of uh, our engineering team's comments. Uh, Yegor, probably not as well. Yeah, that's a pretty uh, solid answer. <laughs> sure. Um, you know, conditional build steps has obviously been in our U-Track instance for a while. So this is one of the considerations where, you know, there were a lot of internal conversations happening on if we implement this, what are the ramifications for how people configure their builds? Uh, and we really wanted to avoid a situation where uh, people were using bad practices to configure builds. Uh, so while we did finally add it, you know, there were some internal reservations on uh, is this going to create uh, or encourage bad practices in your build configuration. So something to keep in mind. Uh, let's see, moving down. Can we have Team City agents to trigger a build on the free space, space available since the free disk space feature have hangs if there's no space available for cleanup? Um, and I didn't read this ahead of time, so I'm not sure if I have an answer for you there, Hersha. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can see. I'm not sure either. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm okay. not seeing this question right now. But maybe we could get back to you in the chat and uh, answer a bit a bit later. Yeah. I'm sure. 